you can really see that he's quite appreciative of, of his head being able to find a more relaxed posture. And you can see what he does when he does pop up. It's because usually he tries to start giving too much and then he does, he's not comfortable, so then he tries to take it away. But it's not. So use your body and just feel his body move around you. So that's right. So you're kind of feeling him move sideways and the bridle, now move him sideways right there. As soon as, as soon as, as soon, and, and it would be his shoulder primarily. Um, as soon as he does that, it's because what happens is he's starting to lean somewhere. So if you want to deal with that, you move his shoulders. And then all of a sudden when the shoulder falls back into balance, the rein will lighten again. Yes, yes, yeah. Because you feel even as you were asking him there, he wasn't really giving his shoulder well. And you'll know that he gave his shoulder when the rein softens again. So now, now push the shoulder sideways. That's it. <clears throat> Keep moving it until you feel the rain really lighten. Cause you, can you feel how he's still up in your hands? Yeah. Keep moving his shoulder, be a little bit bigger about it and get that shoulder, that's it. There we go, good. Now move the shoulder more. It's almost like he's starting, but then he's not going all the way through. You see how he's actually bending right right now? Push the shoulder until he's bending left. There, there, that's it. Good, 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 that's it. Excellent. So the first step of this is that all you're trying to do is just help him see that's it right there release. Yes, well done. That you are not going to take the bit to deal with his mass. If his shoulders fall in or fall out, you don't pull on the rein more. You would use your body that yeah, that's it. Release. Good good job. Cuz you're keeping the weight out of the reins. So then the reins are not necessarily needed to control the mass of a horse, which is very cool because this produces lightness. Horses become light for two reasons. They'll either become light because they're kind of scared to push into the bridle. So it's more of a pressure lightness. Horses can also be light just based on self-carriage. So if they're carrying their body central, then the reins stay really light. And that's really how I like to try to achieve it. <clears throat> awesome. There you go. So really all you're doing before you get on, you see how he's much more balanced now? Because he's thinking more about his body than about his face. And then he's carrying himself. So that's really the first step of self-carriage because it's not uh, you putting him in a frame. You're just looking for a soft feel while he carries his body. So his shoulders up, his jaws rotating pretty well, and his inside hind leg is stepping nicely. That's just really nice. All right, when you're ready, just walk off. And then make sure you, you... Okay, now when you walk, you walk from your hips, not your shoulders. Your base is always the point that you... Your upper body is used to shift balance, okay, not to create movements. So what I mean is, is you wanted to go forward and you kind of leaned forward a little bit. That actually tips him on his forehand to go forward. So recognize the difference between movement and balance. A lot of brace that comes in our horses is because we have shifted our balance in a way that they had to brace to catch. So a lot of the reasons why our horses end up becoming braced is because of the balance that we chose. So I want you to recognize there is two elements going on all the time. So you can stay in this balance and then turn a circle. You could also change your balance and turn a circle. You see, or you could even shift your balance a bit so he turns. You see, balance can have lots of powerful effects, but the first key is to actually recognize what impact you're having on the balance. Okay. So now just keep your balance nice and straight and then circle around the mounting block using your seat and legs. So what you really want to know is that your reins are really not the influencer. And this is a little piece that I want you to work at because he really gets too overbent. He, and, then, and that's where he gets too focused on the bridle. So I want you to relax your rein a little bit more. And I would like you to think about the, the turn without moving your hands. So use your outside leg. You can use your inside leg to move his hindquarters, your outside leg to move his shoulder. That's it. Very good. Yes. And I want to see balance in the turn. So it looks like his hip is doing just as much as his head and neck. When there isn't balance, anytime you have a hyperflexion in the neck, that's a hyper release. You will also have a hypertension somewhere. It, everything is seeking equilibrium and the body of the horse needs to stay balanced. So if something goes too far this way, something over here has to hold. And this really is where you get horses that have tight backs. A horse has the ability very easily to overbend the neck 
but that tension is compensated with, with the tension of the back. And so what you end up getting is you get horses that have short legged strides in the back because they're, the muscles are pulling the sacrum forward. All right, so the first thing to that, Kelsey, is to just really make sure that you can feel his whole body evenly. You have a sense in your own body that as you're turning, he's not, that's it, he's not turning his head more, he's not bending his neck more, you just feel a nice soft flow. Now that is what you were doing in the groundwork when you were using your hand and circling backwards. You're trying to feel for his whole body. So I want you to kind of think of the sameness when you're doing this. Because one of the pieces that he does is he does overcompensate in his head and neck and then he becomes tight behind. So again, your hands stay perfectly still, circle to the right, feel him come across with your, that's it, that's it, excellent, excellent. Now back the other way to the left. left. Yeah, just turn left. That's it, yes, very nice. So you try to become as responsible as you can with the movement of your seat and legs, okay? And then your reins are just changing flexion and feeling for the balance. Okay, feeling for the balance. Like a nice moving trot because he's starting to give through his whole body. So one of the things that I'll say, I say as a horse starts to advance is, is there is a softness in the top line, but as the hindquarters start to come under more, the horse becomes three-dimensional. So instead of it be that the horse is just going forward or back or side to side, they start actually lifting you up. So the energy is that they're stepping under and picking you up, and that's where it just starts to become really beautiful. There's a whole school of training in, in what that means to ride that. So this is a really nice, really nice change. Now do a small circle to the left and try not to touch your reins. You can really see that he's quite appreciative of, of his head being able to find a more relaxed posture. And you can see what he does when he does pop up. It's because usually he tries to start giving too much and then he does, he's not comfortable, so then he tries to take it away. So you either have to submit a horse to that, where they just give in because they know they don't want to get pulled on, or when he does it, you recognize he's doing it because his body's out of balance. So put his body back into balance. That's the beautiful part about it. So to do that, remember the process of the shoulder, the pole, and the hind quarters. So now a little bit inside leg, that's it. There you go, good, good, well done, well done. Ah, All right, now you're gonna change directions. Good, go to the fence. Think of your right leg, very nice, keeping the weight out of the reins. When you get to the rail, you'll go straight for a moment and then circle to the right. In the circle, you should feel the whole horse coming through. Your outside leg turns the circle, your inside leg bends it. Think about, think about that, yeah, that's it. If you're losing bend, you use your inside leg more. If you're not getting the, tur the, the turn to happen, you'd use your outside leg. That's a, just a general kind of beginning concept. Good. So how does that feel? Way different, but yeah. it's so much easier. That's right. Even for him, like, I, not that I don't have to ask, but when I'm stressing, it's like, it's faster. Yeah, that's right. Well, when there's tension in the body uh, and they respond, predominantly that tension is creating the back to be tight, so they actually can't sit and lift, so that when you try to correct something, the pressure can't go three-dimensional, so they just go faster, right? And so then that's where, the, then we go into our reins. So, th so the, the bending of the body, getting the body to shape, uh, when you feel him giving through his whole body and you feel the shoulders, the pull and the hindquarters align, it's like the doors open to the three-dimensional riding. Does that make sense? Because yeah. when the shoulder gives, the pull gives, now this actually releases and he picks himself up. So that's what that trot feels this way more. Right, because he's getting under and lifting. All right, so just as a little test, what I want you to do is you've got your walk and your trot both ways. Now you just start to work on your canter. So you just start your trot again, and you want to keep that balance. Remember, everything about what your body is doing is trying to stay balanced. And, but what a lot of times people do is we'll get close to the canter, and then we change the balance to get to the canter. So recognize the difference between staying balanced and asking for a gait are two separate things.